The following was written by Robert Wright and published in Dodge City, the Cowboy Capital in 1913. One of Dodge City's great industries was the bone trade. It certainly was immense. There were great stacks of bones piled up by the railroad tracks, hundreds of tons of them. It was a sight to see them. They were stacked up way above the tops of the boxcars, and often there were not sufficient cars to move them. Dodge excelled in bones like she did in buffalo hides, for there were more than 10 times the number of carloads shipped out of Dodge than out of any other town in the state. And that is saying a great deal, for there was a vast amount shipped from every little town in western Kansas. The bones were a godsend to the early settler, for they were his main stock and trade for a long, long time. And, if it had not been for the bone industry, many poor families would have suffered for the very necessaries of life. It looked like a wise dispensation of providence. Many poor immigrants and settlers came to Kansas with nothing but an old wagon and a worse span of horses, a large family of helpless children, and a few dogs, nothing else. No money, no work of any kind whatever to be had when, by gathering buffalo bones, they could make a living or get a start. Game was all killed off and starvation staring them in the face. Bones were their only salvation, and this industry saved them. They gathered and piled them up in large piles during the winter and hauled them to Dodge at times when they had nothing else to do, when they always demanded a good price. This industry kept us for many years and gave the settler a start, making it possible for him to break the ground from which he now raises such large crops of wheat, making him rich and happy. Yes, indeed. Many of our rich farmers of today once were poor bone pickers, but if they hear this, it don't go. Certainly, this was a great business, as well as a godsend, coming at a time when the settler most needed help. All this added to the wealth and prosperity of Dodge, and added to its fame. Buffalo Bones are legal tender in Dodge City was the strolling paragraph in all the Kansas exchanges. Robert Wright Following the destruction of the great buffalo herds on the southern plains, there was still one resource the dead buffalo offered, and that was their bones. Some buffalo hunters, like Thomas Nixon and Orlando Bond, transitioned from shooting and skinning buffalo to loading up their wagons with the bleached bones scattered across the country. To anyone with time and access to a horse and wagon, buffalo bones offered an opportunity to make money. In 1878, the Dodge City Times published, The Buffalo Bones Prove a Godsend to a Great Many People. Although the price fluctuated from time to time, buffalo bones were generally sold for around $8 a ton. Wagon loads of buffalo bones made their way to Dodge City to be sold and shipped east. So many buffalo bones were shipped at Dodge City that the railroad built a separate spur to load them. The large stacks of buffalo bones piled near the railroad tracks at Dodge City was an incredible sight for train passengers. When comedian Eddie Foy and his partner Jim Thompson first arrived in Dodge City, the bone piles were a surprise to them. Eddie Foy would later write about their first impression. As we rolled into town, we passed an enormous pile of bones beside the track. I'm not strong on figures, but I guess that that heap must have been 25 feet high and 100 feet long. The sight of it suggested to Thompson's mind the possibility that they might be killing people and Dodge faster than they could bury them. But we learned later that these were buffalo bones, buffalo, and a few cattle awaiting shipments to manufactories of fertilizer and other products. It was estimated that during just the year of 1883, 36 train cars or 8,640,000 pounds of buffalo bones were shipped from Dodge City. 
What were all these buffalo bones used for? The two biggest uses for buffalo bones were for fertilizer and for sugar refining. The Western Fertilizer and Chemical Works of St. Louis claimed to be the biggest consumer of bones. Some six to 7,000 tons of bones were used per year for the production of fertilizer. The St. Louis Carbon Works used buffalo bones by grinding them into bone black to be used in sugar refining. Besides fertilizer and sugar refining, buffalo bones were used in the production of household goods, such as combs and knife handles. By 1885, the piles of buffalo bones near Dodge City in southwest Kansas had been picked clean. Only cattle bones were left to be gathered. However, wagon loads of buffalo bones were still brought to Dodge City from the Texas Panhandle and Indian Territory. 